In China, traditional Chinese medicine, or TCM for short, is on the same level as Western medicine. How do herbs, acupuncture, and Tai Chi heal all diseases? What is TCM based on? And what other strange methods shocked me the most? Hi everyone, my name is Aina. I have been living in China for four years, and today it's time to talk about traditional Chinese medicine. You might call it alternative medicine, but in China, TCM is a very important industry which takes up 40% of domestic pharmaceutical market. In China, there are two types of TCM hospitals, the private ones and the state-owned ones. Surprisingly enough, the number of private clinics increases over the years. TCM is so popular in China that every city has its own University of Chinese Medicine and recently students who you know graduate from those universities are no longer required to pass examination in Western medicine. Basically, when you go to a TCM hospital, you know, some of those doctors do not even possess the knowledge in Western medicine. Chinese people themselves have a very clear distinction between the Western and the Chinese medicine. There is even a saying in China which goes as following. A Westerner would go to a hospital three days before death, but Chinese go to a hospital three years before a disease comes. And there are even some people in China that solely choose to go to a TCM clinic because they believe that, you know, those TCM methods work way better than the Western approach. So now the question is, what is TCM based on? Let's have a look. Unlike Western medicine, which is based on human anatomy, Chinese traditional medicine is actually based on ancient Chinese philosophy. And in ancient Chinese philosophy, they believe that human body is a microcosmos by itself. And uh, TCM is also based on yin-yang theory. And you probably have uh, already heard of this yin-yang and have seen this symbol many times. So let me a little bit talk about the symbol and the theory. Yin-yang theory explains the universe with the help of yin. And yin stands for the feminine, dark, cold, and negative. Yang, which stands for the male, light, hot, and positive, and also the five elements, which which you see now on the screen. Yin Yang is a symbol of balance and harmony. So the TCM practitioners believe that all diseases in the human body comes from this balance. And therefore, in order to you know protect ourselves from any diseases, we have to keep the harmony within ourselves. And the most frequent diagnosis you may hear when you go to a TCM hospital is excess dampness and in order to treat it you have to do cupping and you know this you know through cupping yes that you would get rid of you know that dampness inside of you so now it's time to talk about more traditional methods and what they're based on now we already talked about cupping the next one is acupuncture acupuncture is the practice of penetrating the skin with thin needles traditional chinese medicine practitioners believe the human body has more than 2,000 acupuncture points connected by pathways or meridians. These pathways create an energy flow, which is called qi, through the body that is responsible for overall health. Disruption of the energy flow can cause disease. By applying acupuncture to certain points, it is thought to improve the flow of qi, thereby improving health. Studies have shown that acupuncture is effective for a variety of conditions which are now shown on the screen. The next method is herbal medicine. But you know, the term herbology by itself in a traditional Chinese medicine is misleading because among with herbs, there are also animal substances, even human substances and mineral substances, and some of which are poisonous. Actually, TCM was and still is a driving force for the extinction of some animals, for example, the poor rhinoceros. 
China used to be home to many species of rhinoceros, but all of them got extinct by 1920. All because ancient Chinese doctors believed that they can use rhino horns in order to uh, have some cooling effects on your body and on your mind. So for example, it could stop the bleeding, it could cool your blood, and it could calm down your mind. Pure science here, guys. <laughs> Nice. The next unfortunate animal is a tiger. Funny enough, many Chinese want to have children in the year of tiger because they believe it's kind of a lucky animal. It's not that lucky in TCM. Tiger parts have been used in traditional Chinese medicine for centuries because Chinese people believe that tiger is the symbol of power and if we look at two great animals of China, they are the dragon and the tiger. But the dragon does not exist, so let's use the tiger. And so, because the tiger is the symbol of, uh, you know, power, the Chinese people use the tiger bones in order to treat the bone diseases such as rheumatism. rheumatism rheumatism doesn't it make sense let's use tiger bones in order to treat bone diseases pure science <laughs> Nice. And you know, some other parts such as tiger whiskers, they are also used as a tooth soothing tool. And the penis, of course, is used as a sexual tonic. Fortunately, in the 1990s, the government took the measures in order to protect its tigers. So now it is prohibited to hunt the tigers. However, now, and I am disgusted to say it, but there are tiger farms, you know. What they basically do in those tiger farms, it's not like in the zoos or anything like this, they would speed breed those tigers in order to later on kill them and sell them for the traditional Chinese medicine uses or for some other uses because people just simply believe that, you know, since the tiger is so, is so powerful, so of course every part of it would, you know, find its use. And right now what's really popular is a tiger wine. I was really shocked when you know I was reading the news about it and would watch uh, the videos of those tigers being speed bred. It is really, really, really disgusting. But let's not be hypercritical here because after all, Western medicine itself uses uh, lab animals in order to test their own drugs before they get FDA approved. And in order to save you know, millions of human lives, we have to sacrifice the lives of those mice and uh, monkeys and other lab animals. But as for Chinese medicine, there is literally little evidence that the use of those herbal or animal products would bring any of those promised benefits. And so some of those products have been found to, to be contaminated with compounds such as sulfides, which could cause asthma and some allergic reactions, or they were found to be contaminated with some incorrect herbs herbs, some of which caused organ damage or they were found to be contaminated with some drugs such as blood thinner warfarin or even some heavy metals such as arsenic. And so when you buy a TCM drug, most of the time you will see in the column for the side effect, long-term effects unknown. So are you guys there now to buy any of those TCM products which have unknown side effects and unknown long-term effects. But the government spends so much money on developing TCM, so why don't they go through the trials? So first of all, if we again go back to the core of TCM, we would notice that TCM therapy is aimed at treating the whole body and it is mostly a preventative measure. So it is really hard sometimes, you know, to go through a clinical trial because some of those, you know, drugs 
aim not only a certain disease, but, you know, treating the whole system of the human body. And the second reason why there is no clinical research is that the government wants to promote TCM worldwide as much as possible. As of May 2011, China had signed a TCM partnership with over 70 countries. TCM actually became another tool of soft power along with Silk Belt Road Initiative and Confucius Centers all around the world. China promotes the experience of TCM clinics. So when you go to a TCM hospital, you're usually welcome kindly welcome by a old sage this you know chinese medicine practitioner and he or she usually him they would observe you from head to toe and uh, because in order to diagnose a disease or any symptom they have to for example look at your pulse and then they would smell your breath look at the condition of your skin condition of your tongue and so on and so forth but not only the physical features they would also ask you a few questions you know how stressful your life is right now how's your work how's your family doing how's your relationships because TCM uses a very holistic approach which I think Western medicine should learn from. And so after carefully observing your body and your mental state, they would give you a diagnosis and prescribe you some, not only the, you know, the pills, yes, the drugs, but maybe they would just prescribe you to do some massage or to be not to be so stressed about the work or to do some meditation, Tai Chi, uh, and so on and so forth. So basically they leave this good impression of themselves so i think that's definitely a plus and it could be used as a soft power tool for china the next traditional method is qigong and basically it is exercise but it is a very special one because it was developed for over 2000 years and when you look at it you might think what the hell it's so easy to do but trust me those you know things are believed to cultivate this flow of tea and thereby you know improving your overall health and when you come to china you might see a lot of elderly people who perform this exercise and the next method which you probably have already heard of because it was so freaking popular on tiktok and this method is called gua sha i tried gua sha on myself but i tried the traditional one not the one that you know you see on tiktok i tried the real one and i have to tell you that i went to a practitioner for three months and uh, you know i went there for mostly the purpose of getting rid of cellulite and you know improving the flow of the internal thing i didn't know at that time that it was the flow of tea i just thought it's just lymphatic drainage or something like this you know the results okay let's speak about the results no results no improvement the only good thing was that she you know would use some oil on me and after she would you know finish the massage i would still see that shiny legs and shiny body from the baby oil but nothing else from that i could do it myself guys the side effect was huge though because for three months I had continuously bruises all over my body you know she told me in the beginning I mean the practitioner she told me that you know after you perform it two times it will be over but no every week I would come and for three months I always had bruises on my legs and all over my body so I thought that I should stop it and because it didn't look healthy really the government tries hard in order to promote TCM and you know in order for me to complete this research for this video I had to go through Chinese internet and it was really hard to find any objective reviews on uh, traditional Chinese medicine because the government recently started prohibiting the websites and the bad reviews about Chinese medicine. But despite the government attempts, you know, to guard the traditional Chinese medicine, the Chinese people themselves, and especially the younger generation, do not believe in traditional Chinese medicine, or so they say. But unconsciously or consciously, Chinese people actually do follow TCM, because traditional Chinese medicine has been in Chinese history for such a long time that it is really hard to ignore it and it was 
it's just already you know put into Chinese daily routine for example drinking hot water if you have Chinese friends or people who come from China or you you know travel across China you would notice that people simply drink hot water why well because in the traditional Chinese medicine they believe that you know in order to keep the balance the temperature in your body you have to drink the warm water and it's actually scientifically proven as well drink water stay hydrated it's good for your health and the second practice which was taken from TCM and is now implemented in Chinese daily routine is Qigong I already said that the Chinese elderly really love this practice and they would gather together you know in order to Qigong together <laughs> but not in the exact form of Qigong but some you know basic exercise is also performed in kindergartens and at schools if you go to a Chinese school you would see you know students gathering at like 7 30 or 8 a.m they would gather and perform some easy exercises for 15 20 minutes and uh, it's really fun to watch like 300 500 students gathering and uh, performing the same type of activity all together and the third practice taken from TCM is dietary therapy Chinese diet I think also stems from TCM TCM practices so for example Chinese people believe that food has two kinds of energy which is cold and hot and so for example when you are menstruating this is just taken from my own experience right because whenever I'm on period for example and when I'm around Chinese people they would always tell me Aina please avoid having some cold energy foods for example Aina do not eat watermelons watermelons have the cold energy or cucumbers or okay menstruation is really another topic because the way Chinese people approach menstruation is really really different and um, also during menstruation you're not allowed to wash yourself or something no 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 this is I have to check really <laughs> but there is the whole ritual around menstruation which I think deserves a separate video honestly and if you want to know more about my opinion of living in China, about pros and cons of living here, please watch my last video and see you there. Bye bye.